Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Mark Lowry. Happy Monday. I thought I was going to play a video next. Hi, everybody. I'm coming to you from the penthouse in Ashland City, Tennessee. This is a beautiful place. Shonda Pierce is rich, y'all. Oh, uh, no, that. she's not. She's not here yet. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Sanda Orpa. Listen, everybody. Make sure you share and like this video right now. Share it with all your people, if you would, so that we can. Uh, that's the way we get the word out. We share it and we like it and we make a comment. Uh, Hello, Word Watcher. I see y'all tuning in. Thank you for coming. Hey, I had a great day today. I was over at Reba Rambo and Donnie McGuire's house, and uh, we were writing. Uh, Chip Davis showed up. You know, Chip, what a great writer. Anyway, Donnie Reba, we had a good time. And while I was there, let's see if I can find the place. Here it is. Here it is. Let me show you a little video from that. We're pulling up to Reba and Donnie's house where we're gonna write. That's what Donnie does when we come to write. That's right. Gotta do it up. Well, I'm sitting in the writing room in Franklin, Tennessee. There's my writing tablet. There's Reba over there. Wet hair and all. Letting every word in that dictionary pour through her brain. And then over there <laughs> is Donnie. We wrote one yesterday called Time Will Tell. And now we're going through all my hooks to see if there's any nuggets in there that we might write. But this is what you do when you write a song. You go into a room, if you're especially if you hate it as much as I hate it. Because I, it's like work, y'all. These people do it every day, all day long. She wakes up spewing lyrics. I have to get up in the stirrups and push the babies out. And it's horrible. But I like having written, so I... And also, they won't let me leave the room until we're done. Isn't that right? That's, That's absolutely right. No lunch until a song is written. Tune in later. The best thing about writing with Reba and Donnie yeah. is lunch. <laughs> look at the cornbread. It's better than it looks. And look at the beans made in the instapot marky goddess that's right and here is the chow chow and onions hot sauce and hot sauce we spent a big bucks right here on lunch <laughs> they spent a lot of money on this lunch is this my tea mm -hmm. yes and sweet tea actually without sugar without you can't have sugar that's right you're too sweet already i'm too sweet already reba said Yes, I'm too sweet already. That is so much fun. We wrote a song yesterday. Uh, what was it called? Time Will Tell. Hey, listen, I want to tell you about dinner conversations. The latest one is out today already with Russ Taff. And uh, I want to give you just a little preview of that. Hold on one second. It's coming right here. See you in a second. My dad was a, an alcoholic before he became a Christian. When the pain pills ran out, he would buy a, a big bottle of vodka. When he was preaching, he felt like he was really serving Jesus, and he had not a clue what grace was. That was the only time he probably felt safe with God. Dad got jealous of me, and Mom would use me as a weapon. He would take his anger and rage out of me. And was, something would happen when I would sing, and I would feel the Holy Spirit. I would feel him when I sang. But I knew I'd pay for it. We wouldn't even need AA if the church did what they're supposed to do. Absolutely. But the gospel that they presented and the Jesus they presented was so... He judged you. If your Jesus is a condemning Jesus, you need to fire him. You have the wrong one. He said, I'll stick closer to you than a brother. I thought my brother wouldn't wake me up in the night reminding me of everything I've done wrong. When did the alcoholism for you come into play? With the Imperials, uh, they had been away from Elvis for two years. For all the millennials <laughs> that may be watching, Elvis this Elvis was a Elvis. singer in the 70s. Did you like, become scared of it? You're scared of it, but you have used it for a crutch so long, you're scared to let it go. You're singing about 
Jesus. Then you go back to the hotel and what it you split my it? personality. People you know? don't understand that you can be an alcoholic and be madly in love with Jesus. Absolutely. There is no judgment. We're all just people trying to figure this out and trying to let Jesus change us. He not only loves us, he likes us. He separates as far as the East from the West. He has no clue what you're even talking about. <laughs> You do not want to miss this episode of Dinner Conversations. Go to dinner-conversations.com and uh, you can see Russ tell his whole story and it's it's amazing. Hey, listen, this Thursday night I'm going to be in Abilene, Texas. Friday night I'll be in San Angelo, Texas. Saturday night in Waxahachie, Texas. And you can go to marklowry.com slash tour to learn more about that. I also want to remind you, let me see if I can find where that is. Hold on a second. I love this. Wait, show me over one here, dear. Okay, y'all, you know I'm not professional. My cruise, the Mark Lowry Spring Fling Cruise. The Ball Brothers will be with me. In fact, next Monday night, the Ball Brothers are going to be on Mondays with Mark. And many of you are fans of them. Some of you don't know who they are, but you're going to learn to love them. They're, they they had millions of views on uh, YouTube. In fact, Q, I know you're watching. Go ahead and change the banner at the Facebook page to show that next week, the Ball Brothers will be on Mondays with Mark at 7 p.m. Okay, also another thing I've got to show you before we introduce our very special guest I'm so excited about tonight is the What's Not to Love CD right over my... Listen, it's now available in USB. You know how all the new cars don't have CD players and you have to use a USB? Wow. Well, now we have uh, What's Not to Love available in with USB plus you get unplugged, unplanned the DVD on there, a video, I think, or CD, and you get the What's Not to Love video. In fact, just so you'll know what that's like, let's play a little bit of that. Here we go. Let's see if I can do this. I love my life. No, that's not it. Hold on. Y'all, I, I need a director. Oh, here it is. What's not to love? What's not to love? The Savior took my place. What's not to love? What's not to love? My sins have been erased. What's not to love? What's not to love? About amazing grace. I'd like to know. I'd like to know what's not to love. What's not to love? What's not to love? The Savior took my place. What's not to love? What's not to love? My sins have been erased. What's not to love? What's not to love? About amazing grace. I'd like to know. I'd like to know. What's not to love? What's not to love? About a peace that keeps me through the night. And since I learned to trust him, everything's gonna be all right. What's not to love? What's not to love? The Savior took my place. What's not to love? What's not to love? My sins have been erased. What's not to love? What's not to love? About amazing grace. I'd like to know. I'd like to know. What's not to love? What's not to love? He gives me mercy. Sins have been erased. What's not to love? What's not to love about amazing grace? I'd like to know. I'd like to know what's not to love. What's not to love about Jesus? 
Jesus. What's not to love about Jesus? What's not to love about Jesus? What's not to love? How can I get a witness? I just got to testify. Some people call me crazy, but I'm the apple of his eye. What's not to love? What's not to love about Jesus? What's not to love? What's not to love about Jesus? What's not to love? Can you hear the music? Can you feel the beat? The angels must be dancing, cause he's singing over me. What's not to love? What's not to love? What's not to love about Jesus? Oh, what's not to love? He's just wild about me. I always make him smile. My picture's in his wallet. Cause I'm his favorite child. What's not to love? What's not to love? The Savior took my place. What's not to love? What's not to love? Welcome back to Mondays. Hey, come here. No. Shonda Pierce, y'all. I'm in her mansion. She, That's not a mansion. It is a mansion. It is a penthouse in Ashland City, Kentucky. No, and why is in that? Tennessee. Oh, oh t Tennessee. You just it feels you like forever. Kentucky. You drive. It's like going to East Jerusalem, y'all. He took the wrong way. But and he took beautiful. a long, long drive. It was beautiful. You have a beautiful home. I am very blessed. I do have a beautiful home. You do. It's, Thank you for coming. And it's got good Oprah lighting. I love the lighting in here. Yes. Hi, what's everybody. Let's have a little... Okay, <laughs> that's people leaving Emily Sue McBride, Judy Clevenger, Terry leaving Casey notes. Herzog. Bill, you're right here. Mary Ellen Dallas. Oh, y'all sound wonderful. Love it. Listen, that song is so cute. And are y'all doing your attitude of gratitude every day? Are you oh. following attitude of gratitude? I know. He's got me every hooked on Every day uh, we're posting attitude of gratitude. If you want to order that song you just heard, go to marklowry.com slash store. Store. Hey, before we get going, I want to show you, for those of you who don't know who Shonda is, as if you don't, but if, in case someone does, let me just show you a little, let me give you a taste of Shonda. Oh. We decided we'd better sell this house. You know, it's just too much house. You don't want to cut the grass anymore. You don't want to clean those bathrooms. 4,000 square feet. And we got rid of that sucker, moved into 720 square foot apartment. <laughs> we didn't downsize. We shrink wrapped. <laughs> Honey, I could sit on the couch and see all my stuff. It is the tiniest little place I've ever lived in, but I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. I mean, it's so easy. I sit on the couch, run the vacuum, change out the... Made, you know, I'm telling you, and you never have to leave the couch. I folded laundry. I never moved all day. It was wonderful. I sat on the toilet and made myself a grilled cheese sandwich the other day. It's pretty handy. That's Shonda. That is so great. You know, I remember years ago, Norman Holland handed me a cassette tape. Of second row, piano side. Yes. Do you remember where you made that tape? At a little Methodist church. It was 20 minutes long. And on the other side, it was re it said repeated for your convenience. All I had was 20 minutes worth of material. And how did you develop that 20 minutes? Being out there with you and traveling no, no, no. and just doing Before that, the Oh, cassette. well, a lot of it was my testimony. But, I mean, would you go to churches? Were you already doing that? Yeah, kind a little of? bit. You yeah. had to go somewhere to develop that. Yeah, I did. You know, I was doing Mini Pearl. I right, impersonated right. Minnie Pearl for years, right. and I would take my hat off and say, you know, I'm not Minnie Pearl, but God gave me a job to make people laugh, and it was healing and to then me. You would tell and then that? I would tell funny stories of growing up a preacher's kid. Oh. So finally, the Minnie Pearl got less, and the second row piano side got larger, right, you know, longer. Right. So, uh, was so Comic I, Belief your first Yes. Thing? You know, I had probably done what I do for not even a dozen times, Mark. I don't know if you know this. And when you invited me, you took a real risk. I could have been terrible. Well, she she was incredible. <laughs> Even then, my dad my dad would come up and say, "Mark, you 
You got a oh, winner here. You yeah, well, let's don't talk about you. what you said to well, your dad. Well, don't do that. I was rude back then. Yes, no. he wasn't well, rude. It was hilarious. It was, oh, gosh. Are you going to tell that? No, I'm not going to Go tell ahead. it. Okay, because this is the funniest thing. You know, I was my early testimony was about my parents divorcing. I'm truly embarrassed about and, this. And I had some t troubled times as a young person. And my d sisters passed away. And that was my story. And Mark would have me tell my testimony at the end of the concert every night. And then well, he I knew would, when the Holy Spirit showed was up. Precious. I wasn't stupid. Right. And then he would sing a song, and it was a beautiful spirit, a wonderful service. Well, we are on the bus, and Mark's daddy goes, he put his arm around me and goes, Mark, where'd you find this little sweet thing? And Mark goes, well, if you'd have left Mama and my sisters died, I'd have a good story, too. <laughs> I'm appalled. It was hilarious. Uh, it was finally somebody treating me real. You know, because sometimes you, you do. You, you know what? This darling got on that bus, and she was that loud oh, all shut up. the time. I was loud. And I, I said, darling, loud. your incessant regurgitation of unnecessary verbiage is wearing me out. Remember that? I do remember that. But I do love this girl. You know I what? Would. You have been so kind to me. As your career has exploded, you have never failed. To thank, you know, get, you it means a lot to I me that you didn't forget. Here. Like, I will never forget Judy Spencer telling oh. how uh, they got Cam Floria about this guy. You know, I know Judy Spencer is the reason why you even know who I am. Right. You know, and you, there are those it's people. like we are turtles sitting on the fence post and we have not forgotten who put That's us true. here. You know? That's true. And I love that about you. Uh, so, you, four years ago, yes. David went home to be with the Lord, yes. your husband. A lot of women watching. Because uh, that's really most of my followers are women from like 45 up, right? Yeah, yeah. And on Facebook, and I love that. And and a lot of them are widows or single. Right. You know, but I think having, I think having. Something to relate to. Also, I think it's harder to be a widow because like I've never been married, so I don't have anything to miss. Yeah. Well, that was what you said to me the other day. You can't miss what you never had. You can't miss what you, that's the reason I believe there's a heaven because we long for it. And we wouldn't. We don't know why we did. Yeah, we wouldn't right. long for it if we didn't remember it being wonderful. Because I believe we came from God. Just yeah. Like, anyway, that's the wrong point. The point is now you come home after you've got sixteen sold out shows coming up. I overheard you saying to Bone. Yeah. Hammond. Our right? our our friend. Our friend who's here. Comedy friend. And um, but yet when you come home to this gorgeous penthouse, it's alone. It's quiet. And you said you you said a little while ago we were watching. Oh, her movie Enough is on Netflix, y'all. When this is over, go if you got Netflix, go watch it. Can we you were, believe that? We were watching it before it started, and that's what made me start thinking about. You know, when you'd get off that plane and he'd be waiting for you by oh, that pole. He didn't wait out. There was one place. See, if you'd have married me, you'd have met me outside <laughs> at baggage claim. Are you to get you make me Uber and, home? Oh yeah. <laughs> But seriously, uh, and I mean, no wonder you miss him. Oh, he was a treasure. You know, and that is when I get off an airplane still, there's this one pole as you leave back, I mean, as you leave the security area, that's where he stood every time. And every time I still look for him. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there are things, remembrances like that, that you just don't. Forget. I wonder when you get to heaven if he'll be standing by. Oh, a wouldn't that be great? He'll be standing with by a rose. tree with a rose in his with hand. Oh, and I hope people don't mind us making out right there in heaven because I oh, miss that too. They won't care. What He's about a... that? What's well, going I, I begged you to marry me. You begged me over and over, and you know if you got to quit doing that because everywhere I go, people go, "Are you in Mark Lowry dating? I begged Are you in Mark and begged. Lowry?" You know what? We'd kill each other. Yes. I would have to learn to be We'd very lose our friendship. quiet. Yeah, that's the scary thing. Because, you know, you see that in marriages. They get married and then, you know, I'm blessed. I, I, there are people who are divorced and divorce is a, another whole other set of sadness and difficulty. Right. And you have a bitter root, I think, sometimes. I don't have that. I had a man that was wonderful. He had his struggles and his humanity, but... He but you great. have a group of friends. Oh. Uh, every single person, widow, whatever. Yeah. If you're every human. Yeah, you need a I would hope has a group of friends that you're going to grow old with, hopefully. I hopefully even just one. Yeah, one. Hopefully one. Oh, yeah. You know, I have a set of girlfriends that I went to high school with for 40 
years mm -hmm. we've been friends and we're not just girlfriends that we go shopping with or we go take a trip with they're they really do check up on me and they don't take baloney for an answer you know yeah. and they uh they'll pop in and see me i heard they, one of the girls on the movie say she uh she'll try to be on in front of us and we reel her in we reel her in real fast well you gotta have that Oh, yeah. Are you but kidding? most of my friends are funnier than I could ever dream of. Oh, my, my husband was funnier than me. Yeah. You know, he was just... They're... I'm attracted to funny people, yeah. and all of my friends are funny. Yeah. Well, and the interesting thing is, that's, that's what helps us, I think, dish it out at night. If we were... If when we came home, we were the central of funny... How boring would our jobs get, and how boring would we be with laughter? And it's hard for me. Like, that's the reason I remember when you were on the bus, it felt at first like you were always auditioning. I you was. You were always trying to be I funny. Was. And you can't have a real good, serious conversation if they're always trying to oh, throw those bars. I tried to make him a sandwich. I would ask him if he wanted me to cut his bread. I mean, it was ridiculous. Part of that was my own insecurity. I look back at my career at 25 years of doing this, and even my years at Women of Faith and all, I was so needy. And I don't mean needy like want, want, want. I wanted to be loved so much. I, there was something so broken in me. And I think a lot of it is my career began to advance before my emotions caught up with it, wow. before I had some things that the Lord needed me to learn. Um, uh, Do you feel needy now? No, really? no, not as much. So do, would you be okay with being alone for the rest of your life? Yes. Really? I'm very content. I'm very, very content. Good. I love it when you come see me. Yeah. I don't want you to live here, though. No. But uh, but it is just, I'm just content. And that is, that's a gift. That doesn't come easy. You know, Paul managed that. He said, I've learned to be exactly. content. He didn't say, I just woke up content. Right. It is so, you have to work on that. So you when to, you're here alone by yourself, right. and you feel that feeling, of, oh gosh, it's so quiet here. Yeah. What do you do? I turn on Earth, Wind, and Fire. Really? For serious? Disco music, black gospel. Oh my goodness. Really? It just rings through these hallways. Yeah. I find it. Uh, find me a good old documentary on Netflix. I do that, but sometimes they're so dark, and I don't want to do something dark and sad and lonely. Mm -hmm. Then I'll... I'll scrapbook, I'll cook, I'll yeah. do something. I always watch the ones that have more miserable lives than me, <laughs> so I feel better about myself. <laughs> oh gosh, I made the bar thing go That's crazy. All right, this all right let's, let's see what people are Hello from Lynchburg, Ann Smith and Wilma Bunny. I understand Shonda still want to be loved. That's right. Oh. I still, she says, I still want to be loved. You know, that's what you Hi do, from Miss. Ohio. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Someone that you know, that you know, that you know, they love you. I miss that. Someone said, what is that knocking that keeps happening? Every time y'all write that? a message, it goes, that, that, that. and I've never heard it do that before. I did. That's what's happening. I've heard Turn it. off that knocking sound. Let me see if see? I can. If I turn this off, mute it, can y'all still hear me? Somebody say yes. Can you Somebody hear me? Somebody say if you can still hear me. No, I bet they can't. Wait, wait. They'll say, they'll speak up in a minute. Can you? I mute it. Well, it's showing that right there. Can you Can hear you me? still hear me? No. When you're 64. Built-in microphone. Can you still hear? What's that song? When you're 64. Anyway, back to Shonda. We'll just have to deal with the knocking, y'all, because you're not answering us. Or else <laughs> the answers are not coming through. Oh, I hear us. some, maybe. What? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, hello. No. Hi, yo. Hey, yes. Yes, they said they could. Ah. Okay, so I'm going to mute that again. Okay, so where do you see yourself in five years? Uh... Retired. Really? I really do think about it a lot lately. And, and it's not that, you know, I hate my job. Right. I love my job. But, you know, I have a broken foot right now. Yeah. And it hurt this weekend standing up there for a couple hours. But it hours. won't be broken always. I know, but I think I would like to work less. Let's just say that way. That's what I'm I want to work more meaningful dates right. and less dates. That yeah. would be really good. Um, there's a lot of things I would still want to accomplish with Branches Counseling Center. We have five of them now across the country, and each one of those needs to be a little stronger, and so they each... How would people find out their website? BranchesCounselingCenter.com, and it stays active. I think last year we we scholarshiped out about $380,000 worth of counseling hours that people desperately need. So you have that. You have Shonda.org. That's yeah, all my stuff. Traveling. Yep. I'm trying to write a book. That's oh, you are? Like, about what? You know, it's been 10 years since Laughing in the Dark came out, this book. Uh -huh. And so 10 years later, it's like every time I sat down to write a book, something tragic would happen. Uh, 
<laughs> and my mother That's died. Or, oh, no, exactly. So I'm like a little afraid. You might not want to sit so close. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave me out of your book. Oh, my goodness. I can't let you out of my book. I will never uh, leave you out. I don't want to be left out of your book. You know what? This has been a great trip, hasn't it? Really? I mean, if it all ended today, and I used to hear yeah. George John say that, if it ended today, but it's the truth. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I mean, you've told, I, on every, you've done 19 videos. Yeah, a You're lot. the number one female. Number one awarded female comic oh, in history. Awarded female comic. That's just not Christian comic. That's period comic. That's a lot of gold. Platinum and yeah. stuff. And Bling. on every one of them, I believe, I haven't seen them all, but every one of them, you present the gospel. Every time. That Jesus Why would risen we leave our house abs. for any other reason? I agree, baby. I have a lovely home, and I love to scrapbook, and I love to fish. Why would I leave the house if it wasn't more meaningful than just laughing? Laughter for laughter's sake is it's okay. It's fun, but it's I wouldn't medicine. want to have to leave the table to go do that. It's, like, it's medicine, but I want the healer. I want somewhere along to have you or me or whoever it is make that turn where you lay the audience at the feet of Jesus and they never saw it coming. I love that. Uh, you are excellent. You're at not bad at it either. Well, you taught me well. Well, maybe we should tour together. You know, everybody keeps saying Someday. that. Someday. You think y'all would, would y'all come, would really? Y'all come? You know, because I have a really large women audience. And I do, too. You we do? We just need some men. Well, Men maybe. don't follow me. Women do. Really? I don't know why. Well, you're sexy. I figured that's it. <laughs> you know, when, I take, when I pass a mirror, I just have to double take. <laughs> You and hey, George Clooney. I'm, I'm writing this thing. Where I wish I had it. I, uh, who's that old man in the mirror? You know. Oh, that's so good. Like, uh, I wish he'd get out of the way so I could see myself. Oh my gosh! Let me tell you a funny story. Yeah. My stepfather went to a workout facility for the first time in his life, and so he's kind of he doesn't see well. He has very thick glasses. Oh. So he's running along. He's running along around the little track, and on one wall of the workout center was all mirror. And he's running, he glanced up, and somebody's coming right at him. And he kept going, and he glanced up, and they were not moving out of the way. And he said, before long, I just hit that guy head on, and it was himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and he oh. passed out. They had to call the paramedics. And no. just knocked him completely out. I mean, oh. he did it. Going, and he actually told on himself. <laughs> yeah. He had to tell that. He thought it was somebody that coming at him, funny. and it was his mirror. That's the man in the mirror. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> now, this is how Mark works. It'll be a race to see who can make a bit out of that and get that to the platform first. Oh, no. It's yours, baby. No, it won't. I'll All right, be let's hearing see. that. I'll be hearing yeah, that. Yeah, okay, everybody. I can't, the comments, I have thoroughly. Look, we've this got 1,412 <gasps> people watching right Are now. you kidding me? Because of you, honey. If we would just keep doing this, we see, wouldn't you have shared to it travel. to all your masses. And I asked everybody, if you'll share this video, please share it with your people. Yes. Every Monday night, 7 p.m., no matter where I am, next week will be the Ball Brothers. They're funny. Uh, you know, they got a, They are funny. Y'all need that, to follow the Ball Brothers on the Facebook. There's a guy on, on that that's hilarious. Yeah, they're doing this, One of them. this re, uh, reality thing on their website of them on the road and really? stuff. And it's very funny. They're funny. They are going to be on the cruise. Go to MarkLowryCruise.com. Why aren't you coming on my cruise? I'm having my own cruise. Why didn't you invite me? Well, would you, could I afford you? Yes. No, I can't. Maybe. I, I remember when you'd work for like 800 a night. <laughs> you never I think it was that. half that. <laughs> really? Back in the day. I only had 15 minutes worth. Uh, oh, you were good. You still are good. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, it's one thing to make them laugh. It's another thing to make them cry. But it's not just making them cry. It's, it's you're different. running. They're like, see, when you tell a story like you do, everybody else sees their self in the story. Oh, that's true. That's and they true. relate. You know, you could never tell a story about my life on the bus, really, because right. no one's been on a bus. Right. It's got to be relatable. But you're, the, you're our tour right now is called Getting Back to Funny. And it's about, you know, it's a kind of a play on words, getting back to funny, you know, since David's gone, getting back to feeling alive again, right. and you know, through the grief. But it's about getting back to the very basics of why we are Christian. And and so we end the night with the song, I'm Not Ashamed of the Gospel. You know that old song? I we've love redone that song, it. the one Janet Paschal did. Yes, we've redone I it. It's amazing. Not, how's it go? I am not ashamed of the, the gospel. Sing it. The gospel of Jesus Christ. 
I am not afraid to be counted, but I'm willing to give my life. See, I'm ready to be all he wants me to be. Give up what's wrong for what's right. Oh, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Me either. I remember when Janet Pascoe would sing that, I would just She would so, sing this great voice. Uh, but what a song. And the gospel, I mean, what's to be ashamed of? No, this I is mean, the time. I mean, it gives you life. It sets you free. It, it'll let you have the freedom to learn to be content where you are. Yes. And to, and, and to know we ain't home yet. You know, let me ask you this. Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. But doesn't it seem like since Dr. Graham's passing, it's it's been a time for a lot of Christians to evaluate their service to the Lord. When you see a saint like that go, mm -hmm. you begin to evaluate going, wonder if I've done enough. Man, I, I don't have the witness he does. Wow, I'll never win that many people to I Jesus. I never have. I don't, because I'm not him. I, no one can be me better than me. Billy Graham couldn't be Mark Lowry as good as I am. No, and I and couldn't be same you. you. And I'm not going to be judged, you know, one day by, did I, I think. But if there is a catalyst that would help us step up our game and go, wait a minute, yeah. I need to tell the lady in the cubicle why yeah. I love God like that. Yeah. I need to tell the lady in the... Well, I the, think the message of Dr. Graham, what I love about him, he never veered into politics. He never yes. veered here. He, well, he said, my message is God loves you. Yeah. Over it, over when they were doing that uh, playback of his life. Yeah. Every sermon, God loves you. He put the cookies on the bottom shelf. Everybody could walk up and grab it and get it. Yeah. And I, I that was his calling, yeah. and he was true to his calling. Yeah, yeah. and that's you the thing ever, you got to be true to your calling. You don't ever dive into politics or anything. I notice. Well, because I, I, do. I know, but I think I if you wrap awesome. a flag around the cross, you make a moot point out of both of them. But I, oh. I can't say for you. Well, I'm not wrapping the flag around the cross. I didn't say this you is, were. And this is why we're not married. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just. I vote and I pay my taxes and that's but it. But you don't talk about it. No, no. It's but two you know different kingdoms. Someone, two different kingdoms. No, but when someone t asks me, why and why do I feel necessary to give my opinion? I wish well, I didn't. No one asked me and I don't know what I would say if they did. I just don't care. I know care. what you would say. You would say, it's my, it's my personal. I just don't care to talk about it. I just don't care. I mean, I vote and I want, uh, you know, I want some sort of. You know, something for our kids. I'm worried about that. Right. I, I think we can all agree we right. must do something to yes. protect our children. They're not even my children. You're I ain't got no children. And you're a fan of the Constitution. Oh, absolutely. You're a fan Absolute. of democracy. Yes. Okay, well then why don't we get married? I don't understand I don't what the holdup is. We're going to go get married. Bye, y'all. Bye.